hopefully interesting. So hello, welcome everyone. Um, I hope you're enjoying EuroPython as much as I do. And for the next 45 minutes, you can just sit, relax, and enjoy the talk about big data with Python and Hadoop. Um, slides are already at slideshare.net, and I'll give you the link at the end of the talk. And this is our agenda for today. At first, a quick introduction about me and my company, so you get an idea about what do we use Hadoop for. Then a few words about big data, Apache Hadoop and its ecosystem. Next, we'll talk about HDFS and third-party tools that can help us to work with HDFS. After that, we'll briefly discuss MapReduce concepts and talk about how we can use Python with Hadoop, what options do we have, like what third-party libraries are out there written in Python, of course, about their pros and cons. Next, we'll briefly discuss a thing called Pig, and finally, we'll see the benchmarks of all the things we've talked about earlier. These are freshly baked benchmarks, which I made a week ago, just before coming to EuroPython, and they are actually quite interesting. And of course, conclusions. By the way, can you please raise your hands who knows what Hadoop is working with Hadoop, or maybe worked with Hadoop in the past? Okay, okay, thanks, not too much. All right, so this is me. Um, my name is Max, I live in Moscow, Russia. Um, I'm the author of several Python libraries. There's a link to my GitHub page if you're interested. I also give talks on different conf conferences from time to time and contribute to other Python libraries. I work for the company called Adata. We collect and process online and offline user data to get the idea of users' interests, intentions, demography, and so on. In general, we process like more than 70 million users per day. There are more than 2,000 segments in our database, like users who are interested in buying a BMW car, or users who like dogs, or maybe users who watch porn online, you know. We have partners like uh, Google DBM, Turn App Nexus, and many more. We have quite a big worldwide user coverage and we process data for more than one billion unique users in total. We have one of the biggest user coverage in Russia and Eastern Europe. For example, for Russia it's about like 75% of all users. So having said all that, you can see that we have a lot of data to process and we consider ourselves a data-driven company or a big data company like some people like to call it now. So what exactly is big data? There is actually a great quote by Dan Ariely about big data. Big data is like teenage sex. Everyone talks about it. Nobody really knows how to do it. Everyone thinks everyone else is doing it, so everyone claims they are doing it. Nowadays, actually, big data is mostly a marketing term or a buzzword. Actually, there is even a tendency of arguing like how much data is big data and you know different people tell different things. In reality, of course, only a few have real big data like Google or CERN. But to keep it simple for the rest of people, big data can be probably considered big if it doesn't fit into one machine or it can't be processed by one machine or it takes too much time to process by one machine. The last point, though, can also be a sign of a big problems in code and not a big data. Now that we figured out that we probably have a big data problem, we need to solve it somehow. This is where Apache Hadoop comes into play. Apache Hadoop is a framework for distributed processing of large data sets across clusters of computers. It's often used for batch processing, and this is a use case where it really shines. It provides linear scalability, which means that if you have twice as many machines, jobs will run twice as fast. And if you have twice as much data, jobs will run twice as slow. It doesn't require super cool expensive hardware. It is designed to work on unreliable machines that are expected to fail frequently. 
doesn't expect you to have the knowledge of inter-process communication or threading, RPC, or network programming, and so on. Because parallel execution of the whole cluster is handled for you transparently. Hadoop has a giant ecosystem which includes a lot of projects that are designed to solve different kinds of problems, and some of them are listed on this slide. More just didn't fit in. HDFS and MapReduce are actually not a part of ecosystem, but a part of Hadoop itself, and we'll talk about them on the next slides. And we'll also discuss PIG, which is a high-level language for parallel data processing using Apache Hadoop. I won't talk about the others because we simply don't have time for it. So if you are interested, you can Google this for yourself. So HDFS, it stands for Hadoop Distributed File System. It just stores files in folders, it chunks files into blocks, and blocks are scattered randomly all over the place. By default, the block is 64 megabytes, but this is configurable, and it also provides a replication of blocks. By default, three replicas of each block are created, but this is also configurable. HDFS doesn't allow to edit files, only create, read, and delete, because it is very hard to you know, implement an edit functionality in distributed system with replication. So what they did was just, you know, why, why bother in implementing editing files when we can just make them not editable? Hadoop provides a command line interface to HDFS, but the, down said, the downside of this that it is implemented in, in Java and it needs to spin up a JVM which takes up from one to three seconds before a command can be executed, which is a real pain, especially if you are trying to write some scripts and so on. But thankfully, the great guy is Spotify, there is an alternative called Snakebite. It's an GFS client written in pure Python. It can be used as a library in your Python scripts or as a command line client. It communicates with Hadoop via RPC, which makes it amazingly fast, much, much faster than native Hadoop command line interface. And finally, it's a little bit less to type to execute a command, so Python for the win. But there is one problem, though. Snakebite doesn't handle right operations at the moment. So while you are able to make meta operations like moving files, renaming them, you can't write a file to HDFS using Snakebite. But it is still in very active development, so I'm sure this will be implemented at some point. This is an example how Snakebite can be used as a library in Python scripts. It's very easy, we just import client, connect to Hadoop, and start working with HDFS. It's really amazingly simple. There is also a thing called Hue. Hue is a web interface to analyzing data with Hadoop. It provides awesome HDFS file browser. This is how it looks like. You can do everything that you can do through native HDFS command command line interface using Hue. It also has a job browser, uh, a, a designer for, for jobs, so you can develop big scripts and Impala Hive queries and a lot, of, a lot of more stuff. It supports Suzuki, Peruzzi, and yeah, many more. I won't go into details about Hue because, again, we don't have time for this, but this is the tool that you love if you don't use it to try it. And by the way, it's made of, on top of Python and Django. So again, Python for the win. So now when we know how Hadoop stores its data, we can talk about MapReduce. It's a pretty simple concept. There are mappers and reduces, and you have to code both of them because they're actually doing data processing. What mappers basically do is they load data from HDFS, they transform, filter, or prepare this data somehow, and output a pair of key and value. Mappers output then goes to reduces, but before that some magic happens inside Hadoop, and mappers output is grouped by key. 
This allows you to do stuff like aggregation, counting, searching, and so on in the reducer. So what you get in the reducer is uh, the key and all values for that key. And after all reducers are complete, their output is written to HDFS. So actually, the workflow between mappers and reducers is a little bit more complicated. There are also, is also a shuffle phase, a sort, and sometimes secondary sort, the combiners, partitioners, and a lot of different other stuff, but we won't discuss that at the moment. It doesn't matter for us. It's perfectly fine to consider that there is just a, on the mappers and reducers and some magic is happening between them. Now let's have a look at the example of map reduce. We will use the canonical word count example that everybody uses. So we have a text used as an input which consists of three lines. Python is cool, Hadoop is cool, and Java is bad. This text will be processed by uh, Uh, you, it, it will be used as an, uh, an input which consists of uh, three lines. So it will process line by line like this. And inside a mapper, line will be split into words so like this. So for each word in a map function, a, ma a map function will return a word and a digit one. And it doesn't matter if we meet this, this word twice or three times or we just output a word and a digit one. Then some magic happens provided by Hadoop and inside the reducer we get all values for, for a word grouped by this word. So we, we just need to sum up these values in the reducer to get the desired output. This, this may seem unintuitive or complicated at first, but actually it's perfectly fine. And when, when you're just starting to do map reduce, uh, you have to make your brain think in terms of map reduce. And after you get used to it, it it's all, all will become very clear. So th this is the final result for our job. Now let's have a look at how our previous word count example will look like in Java. So now you probably understand why you earn so much mo money when you code in Java, because more typing means more money. And like, can you imagine like how much code you should write for a real word use case using Java? <laughs> yeah. So. Now, after you've been impressed by the simplicity of Java, um, let's talk about how we can use Python with Hadoop. Hadoop doesn't provide a way to, to work with Python natively. It uses a thing called Hadoop streaming. The idea behind, behind this streaming thing is that you can supply any executable to Hadoop as a mapper or reducer it can be standard Unix tools, Unix tools like CAD or Unix or whatever, and or, or Python scripts or Perl scripts or Ruby or I don't know PHP or what, like whatever you like. So the, the executable must read from standard in and write to standard out. This is a code for a mapper and reducer. So mapper is actually very simple. We just read from standard input uh, line by line and we split it into words and output a word and digit one using a tab as a default separator because uh, it's a default Hadoop separator. You can change it if you like. So one of the disadvantages of using streaming direct directly is this um, input to, to the reducer. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's not grouped by key. It's, it's coming line by line, so you have to figure out the boundaries between key, key these by yourself. And this is exactly what we do here in the reducer. We are using a, a group by, and it, it groups multiple word count pairs by word, and it creates an iterator that returns consecutive keys and their group. So the, the first item is uh, the key, and the, the, 
the values, the, the first item of the value is also the key, so we just filter it, we use an underscore for it, and then we cast a value to in to sum, up, sum it up. Um, it's, it's pretty awesome compared to how much you have to type in Java, but it's still maybe like a little bit more, bit more, bit complicated because of the manual work in the reducer. This is a comment which sends our MapReduce job to Hadoop via Hadoop streaming, and we need to specify a Hadoop streaming jar, um, a path to a mapper and reducer, using a mapper and reducer arguments and input and an output. One interesting thing here is the two file arguments where we specify the path to map and reduce again. And we do that to, to make Hadoop to understand that we wanted to upload these two files to the whole cluster. To, it's, it's called Hadoop distributed cache. It's a, it's a place where it stores all, all files and resources that are, are needed to run a job. And this is a really cool thing because imagine like you have a small cluster of, of four machines and you just wrote a pretty cool job, and a script for your job and you used an external library which is not installed on your cluster obviously. So you, if you have like four machines you can log into every machine and install this library by hand. But what if you have a big cluster like of 100 machines or I don't know, 1,000 machines that just won't work anymore? Of course you could create some, some bash script or something that will do the automation for you. But why do that if Hadoop already provides a, 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 way, a way to do that? So you, you just specify what you want Hadoop to, to copy to the whole cluster before the job will start, and, and that's it. And also after the job is uh, completed, Hadoop will delete everything and your cluster will be in its initial state again. It's, it's pretty cool. And after our job is complete, we get the desired results. So Hadoop streaming is really cool, but it requires you to do a little bit of extra work, and though it's still much simpler compared to Java, um, we can simplify it even more with uh, the help of different Python frameworks for working with Hadoop. So let's do a quick overview of them. The first one is Dumbo. It, it was one of the earliest Python frameworks for Hadoop, but for some reason it's not developed anymore. There's no support, no downloads, so just let's forget about it. There is a Hadoopy, or Hadoopy, I don't know. It's the uh, same situation as with Dumbo. The, the project seems to be abandoned, and there are still some, some people trying to, to use it according to PyPI downloads. So if, if you want, you can also try it, I don't. Um, there is a PyDupe. It's a very interesting project. While other projects are just wrappers around Hadoop streaming. Pipe is a, it uses a thing called Hadoop Pipes, which is a basically C++ API to Hadoop, and it, it makes it really fast. We'll, we'll see this. There's also a Luigi project. It's also very cool. It uh, was developed at, at Spotify. It is maintained by Spotify. Its distinguishing feature is that uh, it has an ability to build complex pipelines of, of, of jobs and support many te different technologies which can be used to run the jobs. And there is also a thing called MRJob. It's uh, the most popular Python framework for working with Hadoop. It was developed by Yelp and it's also cool. But there are some things to keep in mind while, while working with it. So we'll talk about PyDoop, Luigi, and MRJob in more details in the next slides. So the most popular framework is called MapReduce Job or MRJob or Mr. Job, like some people like to call it. So 
I also like this. Um, Mr. Job is a wrapper around Hadoop streaming and it is actively developed by Yelp and maintained by Yelp and used inside Yelp. This is uh, how our work count example can be written using Mr. Job. It's even more, more compact. Um, so while, while a mapper looks absolutely the same as in the, the raw Hadoop streaming, just notice how much typing we saved in the reducer. But behind the scenes, actually Mr. Job is, is doing the same group by aggregation we just saw uh, previously in the Hadoop streaming example. But as I said, there are some things to keep in mind. Mr. Job uses uh, so-called protocols for, for data serialization, deserialization um, between phases. And by default, it uses a JSON protocol, which itself uses Python's JSON library, which is uh, kind of a slow. And so the first thing you should do is to install simple JSON because it is faster. Or starting from Mr. Job 0.5.0, 0, 0 .0, which I think still in development, it, it supports ultra JSON library, which is even more faster. This is how you can specify this ultra JSON protocol. And again, this is available only starting from 0.5.0. Lower versions use simple JSON, which is slower. Mr. Job also supports a raw protocol, which is the fastest protocol available, but you have to take care about serialization, deserialization by yourself. As, as shown on this slide. So notice how we, we cast one to string in a mapper and some to string in a reducer. Also with the introduction of ultra JSON in, in the next version of Mr. Job, I don't think there is a need to use these raw protocols because they are not so much faster actually compared to ultra JSON and at least most of the time of course, it depends on the job. And so you'll have to experiment for, for yourself and see what fits, fits best for you. So Mr. Job pros and cons. It, in my opinion, it, it has uh, like best documentation compared to other Python frameworks. It, it has best integration with uh, Amazon's EMR, which is Elastic MapReduce, and com compared to other Python frameworks because uh, Yelp uses, uh, it, it operates inside EMR, so it's understandable. It, it has very active development, biggest community. It, it provides really cool, cool um, local testing without Hadoop, which, which is uh, very convenient uh, while doing development. And it also automatically uploads itself to a cluster. And it supports uh, multi-step jobs, which, which means that one, one job, one job that uh, will start only after the second, the another one is successfully finished. Or, and you can also use bash utilities or jar files or whatever in this multi-step workflow. The, the only downside that I can think of is a slow serialization and deserialization compared to raw Python streaming, but Compared to how much typing it saves you, we can probably forgive it for that. So this is not, not really a big con. The next in our list is Luigi. Luigi is also a wrapper around Hadoop streaming and it is uh, developed by Spotify. This is how our work count example can be written using Luigi. It is a little bit more verbose compared to Mr. Job because Luigi concentrates mainly on the total workflow and, and, and not only on, on, on a single job. And it, it also forces you to, to define your input and output inside a class and, and not from a common line interface. As for, for the mapper and reducer implementation, they are absolutely the same.
couple minutes left. Oh my God, I have so much to say. Um, four minutes, okay, okay, so, so Luigi also has this problem with serialization, deserialization, and Oh, you, you also have to use alter JSON. Just just use alter JSON, and everything will be cool. Um, okay, so we'll probably skip that. It's also cool. Luigi is cool, um, but it's not so good for local testing. And we'll also skip PyDoop. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> oh man. All right, all right, okay, benchmarks. This is the, the most important part. So yeah, this is probably why a lot of people are there for, for the benchmarks. Um, so we, uh, this is a cluster and, and software uh, that I used to do the benchmarks. Um, so the, the, the job was a simple work count on a well-known book about a Python by Mark, uh, Mark Lutz and um, I multiplied it 10,000 times which gave me 35 gigabytes of data and I also use the a combiner between a map and reduce phase. So a, a combiner is basically a local reducer which just runs after a, a, a map phase and it, it is kind of a, an optimization. So this is it, um, this is the table. Um, Java is fastest of course, uh, no surprise here. So it is, it is used as a baseline for performance all numbers for other frameworks are, are, are just ratios uh, relative to Java values. So for example, we have a job runtime for, for Java like 187 seconds, which is three minutes and something. Um, to get the number for PyDoop, you need to multiply 187 by 1.86, which will give you 347 seconds, which is a, almost six minutes. So each job, I, I, I ran a job three times, and the best time was taken. And so let's dif discuss a few things about this, uh, this performance comparison. So PyDoop is, is the second after Java, because it uses this Hadoop, uh, Hadoop pipes, C++ API. It, it, it still takes almost twice as slow uh, compared to the native Java, but another thing that may seem strange is the 5.97 ratio in the reduce input records. So it looks like the combiners didn't run, but there is an explanation to that in PyDoop manual. It, it, it says, uh, the following, one thing to remember is that the current Hadoop pipes architecture runs the combiner under the hood of the executable run by pipes. So it doesn't update the combiner counters of the general Hadoop framework. So this is why, why we have this. Um, then comes peak, I actually thought that peak should be the second after Java um, before I ran these benchmarks, but I, unfortunately I didn't have, have really time to investigate the reasons so I just can't say why it is slower because peak, peak translates itself into Java so, so it, it, it should be almost as fast as Java. Then, then comes uh, raw streaming under CPython and PyPy and you probably may be, may be surprised that PyPy, you know, okay, do you have any questions or I just can continue? Okay, okay, so. Yeah, so it's, it's actually, I'm, I'm speaking for a half, a half an hour and this is a 45 yes. minute talk, so I have still have 50 minutes. A quarter of hour is for questions. Ah, no, so, yeah. no questions, you see. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, uh, see Python and PyPy. Um, yeah, you, you, you probably, probably may be a bit surprised that PyPy is slower, but actually the thing is that it, it's the, the work count is a really simple, simple uh, job and PyPy is, uh, is, is, is currently slower than CPython when dealing with uh, reading and writing from standard in and standard out. So it, 
really depends on the job. In, in real world use cases, PyPy is actually a lot more faster than C Python. So what we usually do, um, we implement a, a job and then, then we just run it on PyPy and C Python and see what's the difference. And like I said, in most cases, PyPy wins. So just, just try for yourself and see what fits best for you. Um, then comes Mr. Job, um, and a as you see, Ultra JSON is just a little bit slower than than these raw protocols, and but it, it saves you the, the the pain of dealing with uh, manual work. So just I think use Ultra JSON, and finally Luigi, which is much much slower even with uh, with Ultra JSON than Mr. Job. And I, I don't want even to, to talk about this terrible performance using its default serialization scheme. So, okay, if we still have a little, like not 15 minutes, so I can probably return back. Okay, so we stopped at, I think, this, or, or this. No, I think, yeah, this one. So, um, Luigi, as, as we just saw, um, Luigi uses, uh, by, by default, it uses uh, a, a serial, serialization scheme which is really, really slow. So this is how you can, uh, can switch to, to, to JSON and I didn't really have time to investigate also but um, after, after switching to, to JSON, I needed to specify an encoding by, uh, by hand, so I don't know. It's also something to, to keep in mind. And, and, and don't forget, forget to install Ultra JSON because by default, uh, Luigi falls back to the standard libraries uh, JSON, which is slow. So, okay, pros and cons. Um, Luigi is the only real framework that concentrates on the, on the workflow in general. Um, it, it provides a central scheduler which has a nice dependency graph of, of the whole workflow and it records all the, all the tasks and all the history so it, it can be really useful. Um, it, it is also in very active development and it has a big community, not as big as Mr. Job but still very big. Um, it also automatically uploads itself to cluster and this is uh, the only framework that has integration with Snakebyte, which is awesome. Just believe me. It, it provides not so good local testing compared to Mr. Job uh, because you, you need to, 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 to mimic and, and map and reduce functions by yourself in the run method, which is not very convenient. And it has the, the worst serialization and deserialization performance, even with ultra JSON. Um, so the, the last of Python frameworks that I want to talk about is PyDoop. Um, unlike the others, it doesn't wrap Hadoop streaming, uh, but uses Hadoop pipes. Um, it, it is developed by CRS4, which is a central for advanced studies, research and development in Sardinia, Italy. And this is a, an example of a word count in, in PyDoop, which, which looks very similar to Mr. Job, but unlike Mr. Job or, or Luigi, you don't need to think about different serialization and deserialization schemes. Just concentrate on your mappers and reduces on your code and, and just do your job. So it's cool. Okay, so pros and cons. Um, okay, okay, I'll do my best. Um, so, um, PyDoop has pretty good documentation. It, 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 it can be better, but it generally it's, it's very good. Um, due to the use of Hadoop, Hadoop pipes, it is amazingly fast. Um, it also has a, has, has an active development um, and it provides 
an HDFS uh, API based on libhdfs library, which is cool because it is faster than the native uh, Hadoop HDFS command line client, but it is still slower than Snakebite. I, I didn't benchmark this, but Spotify guys claims that it's slower. So, um, and it is slower because it still needs to, to, to spin up an instance of JVM, so I can't believe them that Snakebite is faster. Um, at, it, this is the only framework that gives an ability to implement a uh, um, record reader, record writer, partitioner in, in pure Python. And these are some kind of advanced Hadoop concepts, so we, we won't discuss them. And But the, the ability to do that is really cool. Um, the, the biggest con is that PyDoop is very difficult to install because it is written in C, Python, and Java. So you, you have to have all the needed dependencies, um, plus you need to correctly set some environmental variables and, and so on. And I saw a lot of posts on Stack Overflow and on other sites where people just, just got stuck in an installation process. And probably because of that, PyDoop has a much smaller community so the only place where you can ask for help is a, is a GitHub repository of PyDoop. But the, the authors are really very helpful. They're cool guys. So, it, it, yeah, the answer to all the questions and so on. Um, it, also, um, PyDoop doesn't uh, upload itself to a cluster uh, like other Python frameworks do. So you need to do to do this uh, manually, and it's not that uh, not 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 so trivial process if you just start into to work with Hadoop. So this is it. Um, so Pig. Um, Pig is a is an Apache project. It is a, a high level platform for da analyzing data. It, it, it runs on top of Hadoop, but it's not limited to Hadoop. Um, this is a, a word count example using pig. Um, it, it will be translated to map and reduce jobs behind the scenes for you, and you just, you, you, you don't have to think about like, with what is my mapper, what is my reducer, you just write your, your pig scripts. And also in uh, most of the time, um, in in in, uh, in real world use cases, pig pig is faster than Python. So this is this is really cool. It is very easy language, which you can le can learn in a day or two or something. Um, it it provides a lot of functions to work with data to filter it and and, and so on. Um, and 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 the the biggest thing is that you can extend pick functionality with Python using Python UDFs. Um, you can write them in, in C Python, which gives you access to more libs, but it's slower because uh, it runs runs as a as a separate process and sends and receives data via streaming. Um, and you can also use Jython, which is much, much faster because it compiles UDFs to Java and you don't need to leave your JVM to execute your UDF. But you don't have access to libraries like NumPy and, you know, SciPy and so on, so, yeah. This is a, an example of uh, big UDF um, for, for getting a, a geodata from an IP address using a well-known library um, from MaxMind it, it may seem complicated at first, but it's not actually. Um, so in, 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 uh, in the Jython part, at first we, we import stuff, some stuff from Java and, and the library itself. Then we instantiate the, the reader object and, and define the UDF, which is, which is simple. And it accepts the IP address as the only parameter and then tries to get a country code and cities Geoname from a MaxMind database. It is also decorated by the by the Pix um, output schema decorator, and 
you, you need to specify the, the output of the UDF because peak is statically typed. And as for the, then we, we put this UDF into the file called GUIP.py and, and in, as for the peak part, we need to register this UDF first and then we can simply use it as shown, like here. So it's, it's, it's really simple concept when you get used to it. Yeah. There is also a thing called embedded peak. This one. So we, we already saw benchmarks. So conclusions. So for complex workflow organization, job chaining and HDFS manipulation use Luigi and Snakebite. This is, yeah, this is the use case where they really shine. Snakebite is, is the fastest option out there to work with HDFS. But you, you have to fall back to native Hadoop command line interface, of course, if you need to write something to HDFS. But just don't use Luigi for actual MapReduce implementation, at least until performance problems won't be fixed. Um, for writing lightning speed map reduce jobs, and if you aren't afraid of difficulties in the beginning, use PyDoop and, and Pig. These are two, two, uh, two fastest options out there except for Java. The problem with Pig is that it's not Python, so you have to learn it. It's a new technology to learn, um, but it's worth it. And PyDoop, while maybe it is, uh, very difficult to start using it because of the problems or installation and, and so on. It is the fastest Python option, so it, it gives you an ability to, to, to implement record reducing writers in Python, which is priceless. Um, for development, local testing, or perfect Amazon's EMR integration, use Mr. Job. It provides the best integration with EMR. It also gives you the best local testing development experience compared to other Python frameworks. Um, so in, in the conclusion, I would like to say that Python, Python has um, really, really good integration with Hadoop. It provides us with great libraries to work with Hadoop. Um, well, the, the speed is not that great, of course, compared to Java, but we love Python not for its speed but for its simplicity and ease of use. And by the way, if you are wondering uh, what is the most frequently used word in, in Mark Lodd's book, Learning Python, um, without counting things like prepositions, conjunctions, and so on, this word was used 3,979 times, and this word is, of course, Python. So this is all I got. Um, you can find slides and code um, I used for the benchmarks on SlideShare and GitHub, so thank you.